Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about the last section of, uh, yeah, of Harari's book on the scientific revolution. In this video, we're going to focus on a, uh, the first two parts of that. One is on ignorance, and the other is on empire and science. All right, and, you know, with regards to ignorance, you know, Harari looks at the scientific method and says that there's basically three advantages of the scientific method. One is willingness to admit ignorance. That up to that point, a uh, the people, you know, once we became willing to admit ignorance, then then we didn't have to go ask the the local priest for how to explain something. That we actually admitted that we were ignorant, but that that also means that we believe that we can solve it, right? The other thing is that then the you know centrality of of mathematics and observation. So now mathematic formulas and observation become very important in the in the actual a uh, resolution of a uh, of the problems and we acquired all kinds of new powers and new technologies at the time we, you know with telescopes and microscopes i mean we expanded our a uh, our powers uh, uh, significantly in the during and after the scientific method the other thing he says is that the scientific agenda for the 18th 19th and 20th century was to overcome the ignorance that has led to poverty sickness wars famines and old age and there's a sense that the scientific progress can overcome these, right? This is an important item in, in Harari's position. He also believes that sapiens came to believe that they could increase or and improve all aspects of human endeavors by investing in scientific research. So, and so the scientific research got funding from the empire and, and, ca and funding from the capitalistic system in order for a, uh, it to, to constantly uh, improve all aspects of human endeavors. Previously, the rulers would finance educational institutions, but the educational institution's mandate was to spread traditional knowledge for the purpose of buttressing the existing order. So the answer to the question of why is the emperor said so, or God said so, but the, a, uh, and that was the existing order of the existing myths, but um, science basically kind of uh, took that down, if you will. So the answer, and that answer itself, squelches the desire to even ask the questions. I mean, if every time you ask somebody a question and they say, God said so, it's like, you know, a child asking, you saying, because every time the child asks, they'll stop asking the questions. One of the things that Harari also points out that knowledge equals a theory that enables us to do new things. So our knowledge is, is about utility and it's not about truth. Right. This is a very, very important issue in, in, in Harari's position, all right? Because therefore, science knowledge became the pursuit of utility, not truth. So science is looking at, did it work? Did it work? You know, did it work? Does it work? But it's always, does it work for us? Not, not did it work in some a, uh, a, a truth factor, but it did it work and does it work for us as, as, a, uh, as sapient beings, all right? And science is also shaped by economic, political, and religious interest. It is not inherently more moral or more spiritual. Science is not heading towards a better moral or better spiritual world. It's it's a uh, it's shaped by economic and political interests. Right, so, and a good example of that is, is the, the atomic bomb. Is that you know it, it's what is more important, what is good, what should we we research, and how should we use it are not scientific questions. Scientific questions are about how it all works, but not about how it gets used. So that was one of the first things that he talks about with regards to a, uh, ignorance. And then he kind of circles around on the idea of empire and science. And here's where he talks about, he says that today nearly everybody on the planet views politics, medicine, war, music, and economics through European eyes. They are European in dress, thought, and taste. So our political systems, our economic systems, all of our systems are basically European. And if you take that and look at it, what, what, I'm, what I'm saying here is that if you look at the political system, the economic system, the entertainment system, the scientific system, our health system, and our defense system, these are things that make up an individual's worldview. And in their worldview, they, they then come up with procedural models that say this is, this is how things happen, how the world is, and a substantive model which says that this is how things should happen, the world ought to be, and both of those are basically sourced right now into in a, from and, and 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 circle around our European model. That's what Harari is saying. 
So the reason Europe dominated, all right, from the early modern period was because the European inner subjectivity myths replaced religion with science and then married science with money and empire. That's what he's saying is the, is the reason why European, the European uh, model won, if you will. The European scientists and conquerors both believed that new knowledge along with new territories would make them masters of the universe. It's, so they combined science with knowledge and empire and territory to become masters of the universe. It wasn't technology that determined the winning culture, as we can see when we compare the size of the Chinese and European ships. That little ship down there is, is, is Columbus's ship compared to the, uh, a Chinese ship at the very same time. So technology wasn't the, the deciding factor. European myths were the deciding factor. They established the belief that acquiring new knowledge was always good and that progress was a positive enterprise no matter what the cost to the indigenous people. So the, that's what the European model stood on top of. And it, it did have a racial superiority to it, you know, and, and you know, it, they didn't really take into account the, the negative reaction or the negative uh, uh, experience of all of the indigenous peoples. They felt that uh, uh, they were racially superior and they were allowed to do whatever they did to the uh, indigenous people. So that's kind of where Harari goes with regards to the, uh, the first two sections of uh, the scientific revolution. Thank you.